Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. Happy Monday morning to everybody out there. In this video, we're going to discuss the unfortunate culture war that exists in our society, which is really ripping uh, the fabrics of our nation apart right now. If we could be completely honest, uh, companies, people, communities are using different cultural issues to tear us all apart, even if we probably all agree on 90 plus percent of ideological issues in the world, uh, the ones that we disagree on, uh, in my in my experience, mainly come from fear, where people are afraid of things that they don't know much about. In this case, LGBTQ. So it is Pride Month. Happy Pride Month to everybody out there. That's a celebration of essentially non-heterosexual communities. You can be a straight person and still celebrate Pride Month because you're an ally. You support those to get equal rights uh, amongst the amongst everybody else in, in a world where. There are issues on can you marry somebody you love that's the same gender of you and, so, and, and such silly, I believe, issues that, that of course, of, the answer should be yes. We should all pursue love, happiness, and non-judgment and things like that. But Bachelor Nation Instagram account posted a pride video, haters are unfollowing. And we're going to discuss all of this and we're going to do it in the most compassionate way possible. I'm not going to judge anybody out there if they are not uh, sure why they should or shouldn't support pride. Like I said, many people have been so, uh, it, there's been so much division sowed because of fear and because of misinformation and things like that. We're going to do this. There have been several Bachelor Nation people that have rigorously um, called out the trolls that are out there, and we're not going to feed those trolls. Uh, we're just going to answer some of their questions. How come Pride gets a month when when um, soldiers only get one day? How come Pride gets a month? Where's Straight Pride Month? Kind of like the whole how come there's a B how come the BET network is allowed? Could you imagine if we had a white entertainment network? <laughs> it's like yeah, it's called CBS. No, I'm kidding. So we're going to get into all of this do me a favor follow me on instagram at dneals if you like what i do also i'll be on patreon at patreon.com slash dave neal you can check out our private behind the scenes live streams i'll be live at the 10 a.m hour this morning and every afternoon we have bachelor rush hour the hit podcast that keeps growing even during the off season i think in the next month or so we're going to be blowing the doors off of that podcast you need to get over there and check that out okay so we're going to get into and by the way if you haven't already um uh, i've got the wrong screen pulled up here give me a second if you haven't already i've got um tickets barely any tickets left for my show tomorrow night in, I'm looking for it here, in New York City, New York Comedy Club, 7 p.m., June 6th. That's tomorrow night. There's a code. If you use the code BITCH, not my code, um, you can get uh, more than half off your tickets. There's only a few tickets left, probably a couple, probably a dozen or so, seats a couple hundred. So that's going to be an absolute blast. Let's get into the real um, let's get into the reel right now that was shared between Bachelor Nation and notable alumni, and then we'll get into the outrage. And if you aren't familiar with why there is outrage in 2023 over Pride Month, it really stems from it, it recent recently this wild Bud Light boycott. Bud Light sent a handful of beers to a trans influencer and all hell broke loose. It's not that complicated of a story. Essentially, they sent... Um, like I said, a handful of beers to Dylan Mulvaney. And in turn, she posted a video of herself. And uh, there was some sponsorship money there. But it's not like she's a spokesman on their TV shows. They're not jamming Dylan Mulvaney down people's throats on, on an NFL broadcast. If you were a fan of Dylan Mulvaney, you got to see that Bud Light supported uh, uh, her transition and all that jazz. If you're not a fan of her, you wouldn't have seen this. Except news organizations... Um, you know, jumped on this to sow division because they can sell uh, your rage and it's the easiest way to create um, clicks online uh, in the world that we live in. So um, th there's a few other topics we're going to get into at the very end here. How the Catholic priesthood became an unlikely haven for many gay men. Why is this important? Well, it's important and we're going to discuss that. There was a giant study done uh, several years ago that said anywhere between like 15 and 30% of 
Catholic priests surveyed were actually homosexual. And it's the idea that some people are using homosexuality. I guess we'll just go, we'll go into it right now and get back to this. Now, hold on a second. This isn't a knock on anybody's religion, okay? This is just the, the underworkings that exist in our culture uh, because people are afraid to come out because they think that being gay is a sin. So they'd rather go into the clergy than just be an openly gay person. While doing research for my book, The Sex Effect, I came across many scholars who suggested that preventing priests from marrying altered the makeup of the priesthood over time, unintentionally providing a shelter for some devout gay men to hide their sexual orientation. By continuing to disqualify women and married men, the priesthood attracts men who desire to forego sex for the rest of their lives in an attempt to get closer to God. Because the church denounces all gay sex, some devout gay men pursue the celibate priesthood as a self-incentive to avoid sex with men which can help them circumvent perceived damnation. Now, it's important to note that just because you're gay doesn't mean you're a pedophile. This might sound wild to say, but some people will see the correlation because there is a tragic and horrifying issue in the Catholic Church with pedophilia. That is a complete separate issue from this right here, which is that people are uh, or have in the past headed for the clergy because they didn't want to live an openly gay life, and that was their way of denouncing, um, de you know, denouncing it all. Uh, so we'll get into more of that in a second, but let's just watch the initial reel that has caused so many people to get so upset. I cannot wait. Happy Pride Month, Bachelor Nation. Let's go back to the beginning here. Hey, Bachelor Nation. Happy Pride Month. This year for Pride Month, Katie and I will be attending the Austin Pride Parade this year, and we cannot wait. Happy Pride Month, Bachelor Nation. And remember, being an ally means showing your support every single day, not just this month. Happy Pride, Bachelor Nation. Pride Month is so important because it celebrates the LGBTQ plus community's history, culture, and achievements. Hi, Bachelor Nation. It's Vanessa. Happy Pride Month. Thank you guys for making my coming out experience really wonderful um, because it started off, of course, very terrifying when you're unsure what people are going to say to you. But... You guys made it magical, and I think that we, we did a magical thing with it. Happy Pride Month, Bachelor Nation. I hope you have an incredible month celebrating who you are and the love you've found, no matter who it may be. All the best, all the love. Happy Pride. This month is important to me because we have the right to love who we want to love. So whether you're out and proud or you're still figuring things out, this month is for you too. I wanna to wish you guys a happy Pride. If you are out in the West Hollywood area and see me out frolicking, please stop me and let's take a selfie. This month is a reminder that we continue to work towards creating a more inclusive and accepting world for all individuals. Thank you to those who make the world a more colorful, brighter, beautiful place to live. We appreciate you. Now, let's get to celebrating. Hey, Bachelor Nation. All right, so the question becomes, why all the boycotting? We're just celebrating a, a movement that has existed for decades now because there was a time in which you couldn't be outwardly gay. If you were caught holding hands with the person you love, you might have been jumped, harassed, or killed. Why we have LGBTQ pride and not straight pride? And this is a question worth asking because we see even right here, uh, people are commenting. Uh, and, oh, maybe it's already been deleted. The comment was already, there were, I just had a comment up and it got deleted here. Um, people are commenting like, why do we get this if straight people, you know, you know that, that why, you know, it, it, you can't celebrate one without the other. It's like, it's almost like having a bunch of needy children where how come Joe gets a party? Well, it's his birthday, you idiot. You know what I mean? So this is the birth month, pride month for the LGBTQ. TQ movement. Uh, there's a level of social and systemic privilege not afforded to many members of the LGBT community in North America, and that's why they don't have straight pride. Every time a month or a week or even a day purporting to honor the achievements of a minority group starts in storms, some seldom silent members of the majority will cry, what about us? Kind of like white lives matter. You know what I mean? In February, it's, well, what about white history month? In March, some men will decry the need for an international women's day celebrated on the 8th. June is pride month, a time to reflect on and celebrate lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer history. Undoubtedly, and like clockwork, some will wonder, but what about straight pride? The simplest ex expression to help illustrate the continuing need for these days and months, or other every day is men's day, or white history is celebrated every month, or straight pride is every day, is that the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Never has a person lost their job for being white or straight in North America, or been denied an apartment for being white and straight, or been leered at or attacked by strangers. So we understand the point. I think we can all understand 
Pride is inherently political. Pride has been celebrated every year in June since 1970 after the 1969 Stonewall riots in New York when police raided the Stonewall Inn. Toronto's Pride was launched in similar fashion after protests erupted when police raided four bathhouses in February 1981 and arrested hundreds of gay men. The motive has always been and should remain political, a reminder to all outside and within the LGBTQ community of our thorny relationship with police and the laws that aim to dehumanize us. So we have to understand, it is a issue, even if you live in a community that doesn't see the pain that exists. Danielle, of course, a very prominent member of Bachelor Nation, posted her Pride shirt here, and she was selling you know, these shirts. I don't think that it's her company, but whoever it is, she's selling them. Same shirt, always worn in Pride, only because I just ordered my new shirts from Riot Healers, and they haven't arrived yet. This new collection is so good, y'all. So she just shared that. But after she shared that, she received a lot of hateful comments. Here's what she had to say after that. I'm going to play that for you guys right now. Just an FYI. Jesus would be like super ashamed at all the hate in y'all's hearts on my posts. Let's think about that one for a second. Yeah, if Jesus were around today, he would be marching in the pride parades. He would be hand in hand. He'd be there in the 80s during the AIDS epidemic when people were afraid to even look at a gay person because they didn't, you know, people were afraid to touch it. All these issues that existed. Jesus would have been walking hand in hand. He would have had a pride flag. His like cloak he wears would have been rainbow colored. You know, we've literally weaponized a beautiful rainbow. Especially if everyone's created in God's image. Maybe God is gay too. Maybe God's queer. I I think God could be gay. I mean, we've seen the way we know when it, God creates rain and then it creates these beautiful wildflowers. Everything looks glorious. You know, maybe he is. You know, we always say, uh, you know, when gay communities come into, uh, you know, they when they, they're 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 good at decorating. Okay. Uh, not just gays, but it's across as cut it's, it's across the spectrum. So I'm not I'm not trying to use a, a specific trope because uh, trust me, it, I don't know if it's just working in stand up comedy, but I know plenty of gay guys that are way more masculine uh, um, sort of um, looking than 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 you would think. It's only you know, but of course, if you look a certain way, you can spot you know. There's a visual representation of what some people think is gay, but it's across the spectrum. Is my point? What a shocking revelation. Maybe God's non-binary <gasps> because he encompasses, hold up, they encompass both masculine and feminine entities. Yeah, and some people will say this. They go, well, in the Bible, it says God created man and women. But in that same Bible verse, it said God created nighttime and daytime. God created sea and uh, God created animals of the sea, animals of the land. And of course, we know, and this has been pointed out by plenty of uh, gay-friendly pastors when they actually uh, dissect the Bible, uh, that there are animals that go in the land and the sea. There's a time of day where it's not night or day. There's a time, you know, there are men and women and there are people. People that identify everywhere between a spectrum of completely straight to completely gay to all these other things, and that's okay. That's not a problem. Wow. Okay. So she does a good job of employing the tool of sarcasm to say, hey, what if God is non-binary? What if God doesn't have a God wife? What if it's not, what if it's not like Santa Claus and Mrs. Santa Claus? What if he's, what, what if it's, okay, it's just, it just goes to show that we can think outside the box and do it in a loving way and that's okay. I understand and I can almost empathize with people that get annoyed when corporations latch on to things that will help them profit. 15, 20 years ago, you would never see a gay pride, um, uh, a car, right? That's not the one I want here. Here it is. Ford's very gay Raptor set to redefine tough at Goodwood. So this was from a few years ago, actually. They created, I think it was in 2021, uh, this um, gay pride car, or at least it's a car with, uh, you know, a truck with rainbows. And people go, oh my gosh, Ford's going so woke. Well, several years later, because of the issues with Bud Light and other companies that very, that, that, that support gay pride every year, uh, people are going, no, no, take the politics out of, out of our products. And people can decide to buy the 
the truck or not. You know, that's free capitalism, right? You can buy it, their stock can plummet. But at least I think it's important for even for like the Bud Light reasons. If people say, we're all going to boycott Bud Light, at least know why you're boycotting. And I feel like a lot of people um, misrepresent uh, what actually went down with the trans influencer. And I think, I think they, in a, you know, Bud Light, and I think it was unfortunate, kind of, um, they crumbled. They decided to issue an apology afterwards. And it's like, who are you apologizing to? You were, you, you actually did a good thing by supporting a minority community. I don't think we should have a problem with that. I think some people will unfollow me for this video, but I think I'd like to tell them, get the hell out. If by this point, you haven't maintained enough grace and understanding to hear what we're talking about, just get out. We've given you 15 minutes now. And if you haven't had any of your minds changed to say, oh, you know what? Maybe it is important to celebrate minority communities because maybe your son is gay or your daughter is gay or someone very close to you is gay and they're living a life inauthentic to who they want to be and when you live in a life of inauthenticity um, sadly there's a lot of self-harm that can happen depression you live a very sort of watered down version of what this experience on earth could be for you so after we shared uh, that bachelor nation reel katie thurston posted some comments she got someone said pride gets a whole month while mother and fathers get one day think about that and the absurdity that three percent of the population is controlling this narrative cameron what narrative and head and, she, and then katie responds heterosexual uh, mothers and fathers are supported 100 percent of the time by society you're upset the lgbtq plus community gets a month dedicated to them compare the hate crimes they experience or the fact they once couldn't even marry their partner or adopt or how entire states are trying to erase their identity how in 2023 complete strangers are offended by them existing you're upset they have a month trade shoes with them for a day otherwise politely f off Someone said, I thought you hated The Bachelor stuff that made you famous because, of course, Katie doesn't really, you know, play with The Bachelor crowd, but she did this Bachelor Nation post. She said, The Bachelor is a show. It has no identity. And to hate everyone on the show, well, that doesn't make sense either. There have been individuals who have disappointed me. There have been decisions that have disappointed. But we have to allow a space for people to learn from mistakes and grow. And when it comes to an opportunity to support Pride with a franchise, I'm going to take that opportunity. I applaud the social media team and those within the franchise who wanted to show their support. There is always room for improvement, but this is a lovely step in the right direction. And that's what it's all about. Progress. I step in the right direction it's not about sort of you know the, the, obviously um um gay marriage wasn't even approved by the democratic party let alone the republican party for years and i'm okay holding space for people that haven't gotten to the maybe to you know if you take dick cheney for example right he's he's i believe in support of gay marriage after having a daughter you know what i mean who who's i believe gay um i could have my facts wrong with the circumstances there but the point is is that when you see how it affects your personal life i had a good friend come out to me in college so very early on i understood well we love we love our friend here they they're they have not changed one bit they've just changed they've just let me in on what type of uh, person they are attracted to how beautiful that they trusted me with that information I always say if you want to become more gay friendly, maybe um, maybe uh, move to New York City and use the subway system because you really do get to mix with people of all ethnicities, sexual identities, and everybody in between. Uh, bring some Purell. No, I'm kidding. Um, so anyway, because the subway system is filthy is the point. So people said, I will no longer be referring to June as Pride Month. If our veterans don't have an entire month to honor their service and sacrifices, then nobody should get one. It's just June. And that was, of course, a verified political commentator and a response was may is national military appreciation month and the fact that maga doesn't know that shows how little of a shit they actually give about veterans uh and then this is my favorite comment veteran here we are not props to be used for hateful rhetoric we get two months out of the year and several individual holidays i'm also compensated very well for my time in the service so very nice for people to denounce the sort of hateful rhetoric that's that's being used in a in a culture war it's being used to rip people apart um, so anyway, we discuss Pride, and then finally we'll share what the exclusive interview that Connor Brennan did about his trans sister um, on the Bachelor Nation page. We've discussed this um, uh, 
for the last several years since we've known Connor Brennan. Um, he's a friend and his mom is a friend of our community here. And they do great work just illustrating that you can have a happy family life that doesn't look like what maybe we saw on TV for many years. Rights are important to you and your family. What does pride mean to you as an ally, as someone who has people in their life that are a part of that community, but maybe aren't necessarily yourself? Sure. Um, it, it means a, a few different things. One of the first ones I think is just a celebration, um, a celebration of a, a community and a, a beautiful community that necessary, like every other month of the year uh, has people pushing back against them uh, in the legislature, in everyday life, um, people who would see their, you know, see, like who would rather see them not exist. Uh, and so this is a, a big outpouring against that and a big celebration of like, hey, we rock. <laughs> We're awesome. Uh, and there are lots of forces in the world trying to eradicate us and change us. And we can come together and realize that there are so many beautiful things in our lives that those people pushing back against us will never have in their lives. And so it's, it's, it's a celebration of that, of love, of acceptance, of joy, and of uh, letting everyone know that they're not alone, I think is a really important thing too. And so it's a time when you get to be loud and vocal and uh, yeah, in a way that's just a celebration, I think is one of the big ones. So that's the big happy fun one is like the celebration aspect. And then also... So there it is. It's a celebration, folks. You would never go to someone's birthday and get mad at them for eating cake. Let the allies and the members of the LGBTQ plus community celebrate pride. And it doesn't have to be some corporate or some conspiratorial uh, group. What there? If you don't think like us, you have to. It's like either share love or... Don't comment or just be quiet. That's where I stand with it. And I think as Daniel had mentioned, I didn't play the clip, Jesus and God in general was all about making us in his image. And that image is varied. It's got different skin colors and eye colors and different sexual orientation. And it's a beautiful thing. We're not all the same. Let's celebrate our differences. If you're curious about what the Pride is uh, events are all about, Maybe attend one. Go to a pride parade and tell me you don't leave there crying with gratitude, that your eyes were opened to a world that's more vibrant than maybe you could have imagined. All right, let me know what you guys think.